Here's our first example for distributed loads. What we got here is this problem. You'll see we've got this loading. It starts out at 2.5 kilonewtons per meter over here at the edge, and it ends up at 0.5 kilonewtons per meter over this roller here. We got a pin at O also. Now we also have an applied load at the end, which is 1.5 kilonewtons. What we want to do is we want to find the resultant force and its location measured from this point O over here. All right, now remember what we have to do is we're going to be using centroids here because this, the resultant forces of these distributed loads are going to act at the centroid locations. So keep that in mind. What we're going to do, if you look here, we need to figure out the easiest way to find the centroid. Now, if you think about it, if you go back to your composite bodies stuff that we did, we could have something that looks like this, where we have the rectangular shape here on the bottom. And then up top, we've got, switch colors here, we've got a rectangle, or not a rectangle, a triangle, sorry, forgetting my shapes here. All right, so imagine that. We've got a rectangle, triangle sitting on top. This is going to be easier to do than just doing this whole thing together. All right, so let's analyze each of those. Let's go ahead and do this triangle part first. So I'm going to call this one. So for one, we've got the triangle. Let's draw that out. This length here is three. So let's put three. And then now we need to find this height of the loading. Okay, so we're starting here at 0.5. So this value here is 0.5. We're going up to 2.5, like that. All right, now what we're gonna do is we need to find the area under the curve. Remember when we integrated, we found the area under the curve? Well, we can find the area of this triangle really simply, right? It's just one half base times height. So let's do that. So we're gonna have one half times the base, which is three, times the height. The height is gonna be 2.5 minus five, or minus 0.5. Notice your units, we've got meters and then kilonewton per meters. So this is gonna end up being three kilonewtons. All right. So this is basically the resultant force of just this triangle right here. And remember, the resultant force is going to act at the centroid of your area. Okay, so we need to figure out where that's going to be. And we'll go back to that in just a second when we get to our moment equation. For part two, we're going to do this one. So the rectangle. So our rectangle, let's look at that. The length of it is three, and then this height, notice we're stopping at 0.5 here, is going to be 0.5. Now we want the area under the curve, so that's just gonna be the area of this rectangle. We're just gonna have three times 0.5, which gives you 1.5 kilonewtons. All right, so now we have that. Now what we need to do, let's Let's go back and figure out where these forces are acting. Let's start with this rectangle one because it's pretty simple. This 1.5 kilonewton force from the distributed load is going to act at the centroid of this rectangle. So that's got to be here at the center. All right, so we've got that. Now the triangle, you might need to go back and look at the centroid table. So if we go back and look at that, here we have it. For a triangle, remember we have the base and then we have this A distance, but for a right triangle, A for us is going to be zero. So X bar is in, going to end up being B over three, right? So the base over three, that's the one we need. So let's just put X bar is B over three. That gives us three over three, which is one. And that's gonna be measured from the left. 
So let's just put it right here. That's going to be that 3 kilonewton force. And that distance was 1. And this one, we forgot to write it down, that's 1.5. Okay, so now we have that. So this is why I think it's easier to do this topic after you cover centroids. I don't know why the textbooks cover it before they even cover centroids. Doesn't make any sense to me, but that's what they do. Now we want to find the resultant force for the whole system. Okay, so we've got this force and this force. We also have this one here, right? So we need to include that. Our resultant force then, I'm going to say down is positive because everything's pointing down, is going to be the 3 plus the 1.5 plus this 1.5. Okay. And then that's going to give you 3 plus 3, which is 6 kilonewtons. That is your resultant force for that whole system. Okay, and we're pretty much ignoring these pieces here because they're interacting with each other. So those forces will cancel each other out. So the pin and the roller forces, when they're all together, cancel each other out. That's why we don't have them here. Okay, now next let's look at finding the location. We need the location of this force. Okay, so if you look at each of these, that we had up here. One is over at 1, one's at 1 1.5. So we need to figure out a way to find the location of the resultant force for the whole system. The way we're going to do that is let's find the moment due to this resultant force about 0, and we want the same rotation as we have with this system. So then let's look and set this one equal to the summation of all of the moments created by the forces at O. Okay. So kind of similar to what we did with equivalent systems. When we took the big system and we reduced it down to one force, same concept here. Find the moment due to the resultant about a point and then set it equal to the sum of all of the moments created by the individual forces on your original system because this will guarantee that we have the same rotation even though we only have the one force now. Let's do this side first. Now the resultant force is 6 and we don't really know the distance that we have here but it's going to be somewhere to the right of O. So if it's to the right of O we know it's got to be going down, so that's going to be a negative moment. That's going to give us negative 6 times some distance d. So let's just put negative 6d. Now let's go ahead and do the sum of the moments. All right, for this one, let's start here. We've got this resultant force due to this triangular shape distributed load. That's at a distance of 1 from O. This is to the right of point O, so it's going to be negative. So it'll be negative 3 times 1. So we have that. Then we've got this one. That's at a distance of 1.5. It's also going to be negative since it's to the right of point O. So we'll have negative 1.5 times 1.5. Then finally, let's look up here, we have this force over here. So 1.5, that's at a distance of 4. So we'll have minus 1.5 times 4. That gives you 11.25. And these are both kilonewton meters. Now all we need to do is set this equal to this. Then you can solve for D. What do we get? we end up getting 1.875 meters. So this is our location of the resultant force. Six kilonewtons is the actual resultant force. All right, so if we draw that on here, 
if this is three, let's say it's, I don't know, let's say it's right here. So it's gonna act at that point, right there. And this distance here is the 1.875. Okay, so if you replace all of these forces with just this one resultant force, put it at this location, you're gonna have the same uh, system as you started with. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Just remember centroids. Centroids will help you solve these problems. Let's stop that one. We'll do one more example in the next video.